um, and to be your host for the next two weeks. I hope you have an absolutely fantastic time. And if you can bear to tear yourselves away from the science just for a little while, um, do take a little bit of time to look around the immediate vicinity. I think I'm probably very biased, but I always think this part of London is very, very special because it brings together an absolutely astonishing cultural array of the science and the arts. And it's really thanks to the vision of Prince Albert at the time of the Great Exhibition, right back in 1851, that we have within five minutes walk of where we are now, three enormous museums, two royal colleges, one focused on art and one on music, a huge concert hall, the Royal Albert Hall, a very big university, and by that, of course, I mean Imperial College, and I'll come back to that, and another of other cultural centers, such as the one we're in at the moment. But of course, it's science that's brought you all here today, and my thanks and congratulations go to Richard and his colleagues who've worked so hard to make all of this happen. I'm thrilled to see so many of you from all around the world here to share what I believe is your passion and excitement for science. It's really quite amazing, and I have to say I'm slightly jealous because I wish I'd had an opportunity like this when I was your age. But I hope while you're here, you'll take every opportunity you can to learn from the experience and the expertise from all of those around you. Don't feel shy. Um, do join in and express your views in whatever way you're comfortable with whenever you have the chance. Um, because events like this really thrive on contributions from everyone. And I'm sure if you do, you'll go home absolutely enthused by the new scientific insights you've gained and by the opportunities you've had to meet fellow scientists, some your own age, some a little bit older, and to make friends with people from all parts of the globe. And as Richard said, you may well find those friendships take you right through life, and it would be fantastic if they did. Now, what can I tell you about Imperial College? Well, our primary goal since our foundation back in 1907 has been to advance science through research and education. The discovery of new fundamental scientific knowledge is absolutely core to our business. But so too is using that knowledge to make the world a better place, whether through developing better technologies, improving healthcare, or by helping nations develop and maintain their economic competitiveness. We pride ourselves in excellence in research and education in the core disciplines of natural sciences, engineering, medicine, and business. But increasingly, we find that innovative, groundbreaking research requires teams of scientists and business experts who work across the boundaries between the core disciplines. And of course, translating that fundamental research into usable commodities requires not just excellence in research, but also a truly entrepreneurial spirit. And that's something I'm very proud to say absolutely abounds within the college. For example, in medicine, we've made great strides in introducing robotic surgery by bringing together our surgeons, biological scientists, natural scientists, and engineers. Similarly, the combined work of our physicists, computer scientists, chemists, engineers, and medical sciences has led to major advances in imaging techniques. Those have revolutionized the ways in which we, disease, we monitor and diagnose the progression of diseases such as cancer, but it's also opened the door to more fundamental research, which is enabling us to learn much more about the processes which cause those diseases. And from that, of course, we hope in turn, we'll be able to pave the way for discovering new treatments and ultimately bringing them to the market. In a very different field, we're exploring a wide variety of ways in which climate change and its effects can be predicted understood and mitigated by bringing together expertise in science, economics, and policy development into a single dedicated institute. Now the future for you as scientists is going to be hugely excited because you'll be absolutely at the forefront 
of tackling the really tough scientific challenges of this century. Very appropriately, the theme of this year's forum addresses one of the biggest of those challenges, namely energy and meeting the world's growing demand for energy in a sustainable and non-polluting way. Imperial has a major interest in energy research and it spans pretty much all our faculties. Um, we have an energy futures lab which is designed to tackle one of the four grand challenges um, established within the college. The Energy Futures Lab brings together researchers within the college from natural sciences, engineering and business, and importantly, it works very closely in partnership with industry and with government. And I'm particularly pleased that one of your key speakers today is the leader of our Energy Futures Lab, Nigel Brandon. Nigel is an academic who combines excellence in science with an entrepreneurial drive. He's a very distinguished scientist, and he's been hugely effective in translating his research into meaningful application, particularly through the creation of the leading alternative energy company, Ceres Power. I'm also delighted that Lord Brown, the former chairman of a large multinational company and a great champion of science and of university industry partnerships, is here to share his vast knowledge and experience. So the forum is starting on a very high note, and I've absolutely no doubt for the next two weeks it will be extremely stimulating for you and take you down paths that you hadn't dreamt of. I'm delighted to welcome you here. Have a great time. Do make yourselves at home. And I wish you every success in your future careers, and I hope perhaps that we'll be able to welcome at least some of you back to the college at some point, perhaps as a student, perhaps as a postdoctoral researcher, perhaps as an academic, or possibly even as all three, because we do have some people who start here as undergraduates and leave when they retire, and sometimes they don't even retire. <laughs> Thank you very much.